more than millions of voters still undecided 13 days before the elections. Joining us on Pundit is Business World columnist General Jaime de los Santos, who believes that more than its statesmen, the country needs a commander-in-chief. Good morning, General. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Now, the president is automatically the commander-in-chief. Commander yes. So what did you mean by we need a commander-in-chief? Somebody that can decide, that can inspire, and that can make things happen, not just wait and take full responsibility. Now, this is coming off. It seemed like you were displeased with how our present administration has Not dealt with Not displeased, but rather uh, the record will show that there has been a lot of failures in terms of uh, confronting crisis. Right. You talked about the Manila hostage crisis, the Zamboanga Mama Sapano. siege, Mama Sapano. Yes, so yes. what was it there that was, what, I was, think there what was happened there that was wrong? I think there was a lot of passing the buck. A lot of putting people that were not so experienced and not being able to take full responsibility. So we were not honest with our people. And basically, it was more on the accomplishment of a personal objective rather than on what should be done. What should have been done during those incidents? Well, basically, you, know, you must follow the chain of command. There were lapses in terms of channels of command. And then secondly, they put people who were not a little bit competent. And of course, they uh, tried to plug loopholes instead of uh, being able to appreciate the failures and then uh, taking the corresponding corrective measures to uh, plug these loopholes. There was always passing of the back. There was blaming instead of taking full responsibility. That is the aspect of command responsibility. Now you talk about decisive leadership, decisive leadership but with yeah. now we are um, we are in the midst of a lot of um, issues, for example, with China as well as with ISIS. And we look at this, diplomacy can be quite a delicate issue. Mm. So how can we bring When I say decisive leadership, I'm referring to short term. When there's a situation that you have to confront, you must be decisive. And then you must not, uh, you, you, you must not waver. At the same time, in terms of long-term issues like China, there must be diplomacy at the same time. There must be an in-depth study to be able to come up with the real issues and come up with a better appreciation. And be able to be able to do that, you also emphasize having a good team yes, a around a team. the leader. Yes, you must put people who are very competent, with integrity, with charisma, because you are not only going to give the good advice, but you must be able to inspire people. Inspire not only of the soldiers and the policemen, but inspire the Filipino people. And if they see in the leader that there's a decisive leadership, then they will follow him. Now you talk about charisma. You're saying that charisma. a leader with charisma yes. will have unwavering loyalty, unquestioning loyalty, yes, actually. Yes. So when I say unquestioning loyalty, there must only be one master. And you must always have been identified only with one country. Now if there are certain doubts, then you may not be able to decide properly because you, have, you are thinking of other master. So in here, it must be unequivocal. It must be in such a way that you have always been a Filipino. Because so, loyalty, yes. So when you look at the five candidates, are you seeing loyalty in each of those candidates? Definitely. Definitely. And if you have served another country, you have swore allegiance and you have sung the stars tambanga. I, I don't think you can be a good commander. So it seems like you're hinting on a well, particular presidential candidate. Well, I think that's basic. And I think also a lot of people have, have also uh, made that statement before. Now, you're with the military, but yes, you're also retired. first to admit that a military mindset is not sufficient to win yes, wars and battles. Because, you know, uh, military action should also translate into political objectives. So if you leave this to the military, then definitely you might not consider other aspects. So there must be a mix between military and the political mindset. How do you have that balance? Well, uh, uh, basically that's why your, your team must be con uh, must compose of military as well as political minds so that you can have a balance and you can have more or less a perspective that can look at all the corresponding angles re relating to a certain issue. Now. In the, the, you mentioned that they would, should have a team and this balance between that. Are you saying that there should be more military No, not necessarily. In the it depends on the situation. There are some situations wherein you must have... Uh, it, it does not matter. Who, as long as uh, everybody uh, in that team are represented. In fact, not only in terms of political, but, but even the social and even from the academy, especially if the issue is something that's very, very compre comprehensive and very complicated. Now, very complicated. We're talking about peace in Mindanao. Peace, yes. How do so we, when how you, do you expect peace the in... president to deal with that? Well, definitely, this is a long process. But right there and then, you must come up with a certain decision in order to prescribe a, uh, a stopgap measure while uh, coming up with more permanent solution. For example, when you talk of the peace process, this is a permanent solution that will take a long time. But in the meantime, how can you elevate 
and how can you ease up the tension uh, that uh, is reflected on both the Muslim and the Christians. So I think we sh you, you should have to come up with certain stopgap measures while coming up with a more comprehensive and long-lasting solution. What would be that stopgap uh, Well, for example, no, when you talk of firearms, there are a lot of firearms in Mindanao. When you talk of, uh, when you talk of private armies, there are a lot of private armies. So you try now to lessen the tension by uh, d by reducing the number of the wherewithal that will create uh, that will create fear with our firearms. There are a lot of loose firearms. There are a lot of private armies, and there are a lot of uh, and of course, basically, the law enforcement aspect must be strengthened. Now, with all these security issues surrounding us, these elections become crucial. And yes, as you yes. say, we need to have a decisive leader, a good commander in chief. Yes. Thank you very much, Thank John, much. for joining us this morning.